Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video on XLOOKUP. Now XLOOKUP is a lookup function in Excel. If we click on the formulas ribbon you will find it lurking in the functions library underneath this lookup and reference area. And you'll see as we scroll down we have XLOOKUP at the bottom. Now, if you've never used XLOOKUP before, you may be more familiar with VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP or even something like INDEX and MATCH. And if you've ever used any of those functions to perform lookups previously, then I think you're going to find XLOOKUP really exciting. The closest thing I can compare it to would be INDEX and MATCH, as it has the same ability to look up a value in a table and return a result no matter where the result is located in the table. VLOOKUP has some limitations and I will discuss that as we go through. So the easiest thing to do is really just to demo this amazing new function in Excel. So let's look at the data that we're using first of all. Now I have a table here which just lists some apps that you might find on a mobile device. It's showing me the category in the first column. I have the app name in column B. I have the amount of revenue generated and the amount of profit. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to select an app in cell H2 and you can see I have a little data validation list with all of my apps loaded up. And once I select that app, I want it to tell me what the category is for that app, what the revenue and what the profit is. And we're going to use the XLOOKUP function in order to do this. Let me first explain how XLOOKUP differs from VLOOKUP. With a VLOOKUP, whatever you're looking up, so in this case it's going to be the value in H2 when I select an application, the lookup value must always be in the leftmost column. So what that means in this scenario is that if I'm looking for the category of the app, if I was using VLOOKUP, I wouldn't be able to find it because the app or the lookup item is to the right of what I want to return. And that is the limitation of VLOOKUP. It works from left to right. Now, historically, we've always got around that by utilizing the index and match functions together, which basically lets us do exactly what XLOOKUP now does, but with a lot less stress and headaches. So let's see XLOOKUP in action. I'm going to click in cell H5 and I'm going to type in equals XLOOKUP. And now we get our arguments and you'll see there's quite a lot of them there. Now remember that the ones in square brackets, so if not found match mode and search mode, they're actually optional arguments. Anytime you see an argument that's in a square bracket, it's optional. And we are going to explore one of these in later examples, but I really just want to focus on these first three arguments in this particular example. So the first thing we need to tell Excel is what is our lookup value? What are we looking up? So I'm going to be looking up the app, which is going to be in cell H2. The app is my lookup value. Comma, lookup array. Where do I want to find this app name? Well, I want to find it in the list of apps. So my lookup array is B3 to B10. Comma. It then says, OK. Once I've found it, what column do you want me to return or, or which range contains the piece of information you want returned? So I'm looking for the category for this app. So my return array is going to be the category A3 to A10. Close my bracket. It is that simple. For anyone who's done this using index and match, hopefully you will see how much simpler this is press enter. Now currently I get NA and that's because the lookup value is H2 and currently I have nothing in H2. So what I need to do is either type in an app name or select from my data validation list. So if I say office lens you'll see that that now updates and it's telling me the category is productivity. If I refer to my table over here and find office lens, I can see, in fact, that is correct. The category is productivity. And if I was to select a different app from this drop down list, Instagram, for example, it's going to pull back a different result. 
And if I didn't have a data validation list, I could just type into H2 as well. And if you're interested in learning how to create things like data validation lists, I will be doing a video on that very soon. So let's utilize XLOOKUP again and find the revenue and the profit. So I'm going to say equals XLOOKUP open bracket. My lookup value is H2, comma, lookup array. I'm still looking for the app in the list of apps, comma, what do I want returned? I want the revenue returned. So I select the revenue array, close my bracket, enter 30,000. A quick visual check and I can see that yes, in fact, that is the correct answer. Let's do the final one because practice does in fact make perfect. X lookup, open bracket, lookup value H2. I'm looking for it in the apps list, comma, and this time I want to return the profit. Close my bracket and there we go. And once again, if I select a different item, it's going to update and give me the correct results. So, so much simpler than index and match and much more flexible than VLOOKUP. Now I'm going to quickly show you another example. So I'm going to jump across to my XLOOKUP2 worksheet. Now I have the same table. I have a slightly different layout. My app is going to be at the top here and I'm still looking for the revenue and the profit for the app listed in B1. But the difference here is that I'm going to use a single formula to return me both results. So I'm going to get the revenue and the profit using one formula. So let's start out by typing in an app. I'm going to say Facebook up here. And in revenue, I'm going to construct my XLOOKUP. Equals XLOOKUP open bracket. My lookup value is going to be B1 comma I'm looking for it in the apps list, B7 to B14, comma. Now I want it to return the revenue and the profit. And because these columns are next to each other, all I need to do is select both of the columns. So I'm including both ranges here, C7 to D14, close my bracket, hit enter and I magically get both results using one formula. Once again, you could have this as a data validation drop down list or alternatively, you could type in, let's go for LinkedIn this time. And you'll see that those results update. Now what I want to do is I'm going to add in some error checking into this formula. And if you remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned those optional arguments that you have for the XLOOKUP function. So what I'm going to do is in B1, I'm going to make a quick spelling error. I'm going to say linked in. So now I'm getting an error here. It says NA because it can't find linked in in the list of apps because I've spelt it wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my formula and I'm going to edit up in the formula bar and add in some error checking so that if there is some kind of error, instead of an NA, which isn't very meaningful, it might say something like app not found. So at the end of my formula, I'm going to click in here. I'm going to do a comma and you can now see underneath the argument that I have highlighted in bold is if not found. So what do I want the formula to do if it can't find the app? And I want it to produce a message, which I'm going to put in quote marks because it's text, of app not found. And it's always good to build error checking into your formulas because it really helps people understand exactly where they've gone wrong. So now if I hit enter, you can see I'm getting that message app not found. If I now replace that with something that's correct, booking, it's going to give me my results. If I spell something wrong, so if I type in Sportify and hit enter, I get app not found. So think about utilizing error checking as well. Now in this final example, I'm going to show you how you can utilize named ranges. Now, if you've never used a named range before, all it means is that you are assigning a name to a specific range of cells. So I might choose to name 
this group of cells apps, maybe this group of cells category, so on and so forth. And I always recommend that people do try and name their ranges wherever possible, because it instantly makes your formulas more meaningful and much easier for people to understand what's going on. So let's name a couple of ranges and then let's utilize them in our XLOOKUP formula. So I'm going to name uh, this range just here category. And to name a range, it's very simple. You jump up to the name box, which is just above and to the left of the formula bar. Click and type in the name of your range category and hit enter. I'm also going to name this range. I'm going to call that one revenue. And it's worth noting when you are using named ranges, if you want to name them two words, you can't have a space in there. So you would have to separate with an underscore if you wanted to name it something like that, or you would have to make it all one word. So just bear that in mind. And then finally, I'm going to name this range profit. So now I have my ranges named, and if you're wondering where those ranges are kept once they're named, if you go to your formulas ribbon and into the name manager, you will see any named ranges that you have in there, and you can edit them, delete them, create new ones if you want to from here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to my XLOOKUP formula, and I'm going to edit it up in the formula bar. So here we have XLOOKUP. It's utilizing H2 as the lookup value. That's fine. Then the next cell range we have just here is the app cell range. Now I didn't name the app cell range, but I did name A3 to A10. So I'm going to highlight A3 to A10 and replace it with the named range. So you'll see as I start to type it in, Excel helps me out. It says I found a named range and I can double click to select it. Hit enter and my formula still works. I could do the same over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to name this range of data. I'm going to call this apps. I'm going to go into the XLOOKUP formula for revenue. I'm going to highlight B3 to B10 and replace that with apps. And then I'm going to highlight C3 to C10 and replace that with revenue. Now a little tip here, if you can't remember what you've named your range, if you press the F3 key on your keyboard, Excel will show you all of the named ranges that you have in your workbook. So I can see here, ah, okay, it's revenue that I'm looking for. Click on okay, hit enter, and my answer is correct. And look how much easier that formula is to understand for anybody looking at it. Instead of cell ranges, we now have meaningful names. Let's do the final one just to be consistent. So I'm going to replace B3. I'm going to press the F3 key on my keyboard and select apps. And then I'm going to select D3 to D10, F3 key, and I'm going to replace that with profit. Hit enter and my formula still works. And let's just check by switching to a different app. There we go. So that's a few different examples of how you can utilize XLOOKUP and also how you can incorporate named ranges into those formulas. That's it for this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.